as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God today for his mercies. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. You're a good Father. You care. You watch over us, O Lord. And this day, we thank you. We thank you that you love us this much to continue teaching us and causing us to know you more deeper and deeper and even giving us wisdom on how we can be better, on how much we can bear much fruit. Give us a grace to die to self and be willing to plant that we may bear much fruit. Thank you, Lord, because you're faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you again. I'm Pastor Isaac Muriuki in Crisco Church, Umoja, Nairobi. And I said, if you happen to be near Umoja, Nairobi, you're most welcome to our church. We're in Umoja, Inakon. I also want to thank some of you who have given me feedback. You have listened to our message and you have been encouraged. Thank you. A number have told me that I've been encouraged. And this gives me encouragement also. But all the glory, again, goes to our Father who, has, who enables us to do this. Today, I want us to continue with our message. The message is dying and planting in order to bear much fruit. And you have mentioned a number of issues. And today, I want us to continue. But in the last meeting, we saw that as if you sow sparingly, you shall also reap sparingly. If you are not willing to go all the way and plant, plant, plant so much here and there, every other place, wherever you have opportunity, plant, you cannot bear much fruit. Don't look at only one area of planting. Oh, I only give my tithe. Some of us are very keen on tithe, you know. I'll only give my tithe and you calculate to zero, zero point something. I'll give my tithe and every coin you give. It's fine. That's good. Do tithe. But there are other opportunities you have in your life to plant. You're living with people every so often. You have people around you. They need help. They need assistance. You have relatives. They have children who need to be educated. If you have ability, take them to school. Not even your relatives, even other people who are needy, if you have opportunity, take them to school, pay for their school fees. You have, um, and by the way, there are some people who really understand this, especially if some people are not born again, some communities. I remember there was a church which was being built somewhere in Joro, and when the Asian knew that the service was to a church, he gave a whole uh, a machine that would have costed over 20000 20, per day, he gave it for free. He sent a driver and a pickup and a machine. He said, church? Yes. He said, let it be there. No charge. They understand. They are not here about it. To him that a much is given, a much is expected. And so, give and you receive back the same. You not, don't plant lemons and expect oranges. If you plant oranges, expect oranges. If you, expect, if you put, plant lemons, you expect lemons. So if you plant kindness, help, assistance, expect the same. I remember one time, I was somewhere in Ikisumu. And uh, I was staying in uh, one lady's house. She was my age of my mother. And uh, in, I was staying actually in her servant quarters. She had a nice house. And we were a bit free, and he called, she called me, and she, she, she used to like me and tell me, my son, Nyathina, my son, when I was building this house, I built it with all my energy. There's nothing I spared. I did, I gave my all, all. There's nothing that was left. I gave my all. And I, there's something I got from her. That time, 
many years back in the year 2002, that house was rent was about 40,000. So she was getting the reward of her planting. She was getting the reward of her effort, the dying to appetites of other things. Maybe other women would have wanted to have just found the house and uh, buy all those fashions and travel the whole world over. But she said, I gave my all. I built this house with all my energies. That's what the Lord wants about us. Whatever you do, do it like you never do it again. Whatever you support, whatever seed you plant, plant it with all joy and all wisdom and all your intelligence and all everything that is within you. Don't do it haphazardly. Don't do it half-heartedly. Do it with all your heart. And it will bear much fruit in due time. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Don't think you're going to, to, to show hatred. You're the one causing people to hate each other. You're the one taking gossip from one person to the other. And expect that you, you're going to harvest much. Forget it. Whether you're in church or wherever. Pla- has put seed, the seed you want to reap later in life is what you plant. Uh, know the Bible says that he who goes out weeping Carrying seed to sow. We return with songs of joy. Carrying chiefs with him. I can assure you uh, for a fact. That when you're planting. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's weighty. Sometimes it demands on you. Sometimes you're helping children. And you don't have much money. You, you have to divide your money. You forgo some of your, of, of your, your fun. You you cannot uh, afford some of the things. I remember another young man he used to tell us that they, they used to have in their house, there used to be a place where they would always have visitors and they would always accommodate them. And often they would have people coming from the village, the town, and they would support them. And they, they were freely and enjoyingly uh, doing that. They were planting seed. And this young man was telling me, actually I remember in his graduation, he had a first class on us. And he got a job within before... Three months were over. He got a job. The, mom, the parents had planted seed. Their children were reaping from the blessings of the parents. Who are you to imagine that you're going to just sit back, eat what you have, spare your energies, have your fun, and don't plant, and don't die to appetite and reap much. It will be unfortunate for you. You have to do that. You have to plant. You have to die to self, to appetite, and God will bless you. Now, I want to go to the third part, and I want to give us examples of people who chose to die to appetites, and they planted seed. Some got reward immediately, but good reward. They got they were fruitful, and others took long. And I want to start with the, the it's called the window of Seraphath. In the book of First Kings, chapter 17, from verses 8 to 24. We have heard of this story where who to whom Elijah prophet, the prophet was sent to. And when he got to this lady, he asked the lady, Lady, I want you to give me some water. And she, she gave the man there some water. He said, even before as I give me the water, go and prepare some cake for me. Go and prepare some cake for me and bring it with you. Now, I have tried to think of the imagine the situation this woman was saying. Because she said, all we have is some little oil and little flour. And all we want to do is make our last meal and die. And imagine, if it were me today and somebody comes, I don't know the person, and of course, God is able to help us design. But imagine she had to give out almost her last to someone. Whether you feel instructed by God, because God is faithful. He's the one who guides us to do these things. But if, supposing this woman had been disobedient, supposing she said, well, Shetani, Shindwe, I cannot do this. Who are you? You are a demon. Even the last meal, I want to eat it alone. No, no, no. She gave, she gave, she went and did as the servant of God did. I told her. What were the benefits? 
what were the benefits? This lady reaped. She got flour and oil to push her throughout the drought time. She had enough for herself and her son. And even when things went badly for her, that her son died, was sick, was very sick, the servant of God healed the, or prayed for the kid, and the kid got well. She got her harvest. She got her, she, she reaped from her, her seed. We also see the children of Israel. The children of Israel, in the book of Exodus, in the book of Exodus chapter 36, verses 3, going to 7. I'll read this. The Bible tells us how the children of Israel gave excessively. And this should be a lesson to us, children of God, especially as who are in church. The Bible says from verses 3 that they gave until they were told stop. Can't give any more. You cannot give any more. We have had enough to build the temple. They could not, they needed no more. I wonder how many times we are able to do that in church and tell people we have had enough. Some people don't want to give to church or if they give their tithes, they think it's enough. But what were the results in the book of Exodus chapter 40 and verses 34? 40 and verses 40, 34. At the end there, this is what happened. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. I want to encourage you. See, by giving them, giving themselves freely to God, freely to God, not just, I'm sure they were not just giving for money for the sake of money. They were giving themselves. They were saying, what else can we give? As Paul was telling, uh, was saying that they do not only give themselves to, uh, to give money, but they also freely give, it, give themselves to us. They freely give them to God. The anointing of God is attracted and you bear much fruit as a church if you're willing to freely give yourself to the Lord. You, the seed that we plant is that freely giving to God, freely giving our life, freely giving whatever opportunity that we have to give, we, we, we release it, we give it freely. The anointing, without coercion, without pressure, that they will attract the presence of God, the anointing of God. You reap spiritually, and God is faithful. Now, let's also talk about the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman. The woman of Shunem got the revelation of God. He saw the servant of God. Without because, and again, I want to encourage you, don't give because like an ATM. You know, when you go to an ATM, you, you're expecting money to come out there. Don't just go like um, you're expecting results there. Do it sometimes expecting nothing. Of course, you know God will live, but when and how, leave it to him. Don't, again, um, box God to show him, expect him that he must follow this path. He must follow this direction. You know, I've given a 10,000, I'll get a 100,000. God is always God and he'll choose how to bless you and how, to, I mean, when to bless you. The Shunammite woman, she was just being kind. She just thought, why don't I be a blessing to this man of God? He passes here every time and he looks tired. I'm sure the son of God looks tired and she got the wisdom. Why don't I just bless this man? And he talked to her husband, a respectable woman, a respectable husband. Let's build a house for this man of God. And let's put a table there and a seat and a bed so that when this man of God comes, he, is, he rests. And of course, I'm sure they would give him food. They didn't, no, they didn't do that because they expected you know, some miracle or something. But no, the spirit of God spoke to the servant of God. And he, uh, he sent his servant as this woman that has been so kind to us. Does she have, does she have a need? That could attend to. Does she have a particular need? And Gehathi, the servant of Elisha, went and talked to the woman and said, Yeah, this she said she knew the man knew, Gehathi knew that this woman did not have a child. And 
by the power of God, the Spirit of God, Erisha prophesied to her and declared by same time like this next year, you shall have a child. And the woman was not almost believing like Sarah. She said, don't, you know, servant of God, you know, I'm old and my father, my husband is old. Don't put us into temptation. Don't try to tempt us. Just, and, but the word of God is true. Next year, at the same time, like the same, they had a child. God is with you. Then thereafter, when the child got, got unwell, the servant of God was able to pray for the child and the child gave, came back to life. What are we saying? We may plant little, but what God blesses us with spiritually, physically, the peace we enjoy, the good health we enjoy, the good relationships we have, and many other things, they are awesome compared to what we have planted. The seed we plant is sometimes too little, but what we have in return is so, so much. And again, I want to encourage somebody, don't be impatient. Young people, don't be impatient. Don't, again, I say, don't just expect, oh, I planted today, so tomorrow I expect this. Some of us, the Lord will allow us to take so much time so that when there is fruits come, there will be so much. Like some of you who come from areas where you grow mangoes. You know there are some mangoes you plant and it stays for many years. But that mango, when it will bear fruit, it will bear so much fruit and shade that it can cover almost the whole village. The, the whole village can assemble there. And when the fruits come, everyone in the village can eat to their, to her, to their satisfaction. So much. And this is what will happen to some of us. You plant today, it may take so long before you, bear, you get the fruit. But when the fruit comes, it will be so, so much that you'll be a blessing to yourself and many, many people in the world. May it be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's also mention briefly about King Solomon. When King Solomon came into power and he was a king, um, announced king and anointed for kingship, he chose to be good to, his, to, the, to the Lord. Just say, not even expecting anything back. He was already a king. But he chose, let me just be a blessing to my Lord. And this is the spirit I wish us to understand. Brethren, don't be mean to your father, your creator. Just choose to do things, just to, to, be, to, be, to walk with your Lord, and to our Lord, and let's just be good. Not, not because we are hungry and uh, we are poor, we are jobless, so we are planted that tomorrow we get a job so that uh, tomorrow, young man, you are planted because tomorrow you need a wife, a young lady, you are planted because you need a husband. No, let's just choose to walk with the Lord and be a blessing. Let's be a blessing to, to, to the Lord. And so we see Solomon, King Solomon, the first book, king of, the, first, the book of Kings, first Kings and chapter 3. You find Solomon slaughtering so many animals. So many animals. This man was selfless. He gave his all. About a thousand cows. I don't know whether you know what a thousand cows mean. The number of cows that is. Even the process of throttling them. But what do you find in return? In the book of First Kings again chapter 8. Verses 60 and 62. We find that when Solomon went to the Lord. And asked for wisdom. It was granted to him. Because he had been faithful. He had shown love to his father. Not expecting anything back. But because he felt it's his duty to be good to the Lord. He had planted. And not imagined, oh, maybe he had a lot of uh, wealth. No, according to the wealth he had, he gave as much. And I'm sure he gave his all. And we find in return, he becomes a wise man. That is history. And even God has chosen that in his lineage, God chose that in his lineage, would our Lord Jesus Christ would come. The line of the king, the line of sons. David had many sons, but he chose that Solomon, through Solomon, Jesus Christ's generation would come, or lineage would be born. On this same area, I want us to talk to about the early church. The early church had a very interesting uh, nature when they, well, after the death of uh, and resurrection of Jesus, and we find in the book of Acts chapter four that they sold their possessions and brought proceeds to the apostles' feet. 
Am I proposing that we sell our properties today? No, far, be, far from that. But I'm saying, whatever is within us, are we willing to go and support the genuine servant of God? Could it be someone, a servant of God in your area? And you know this man is true servant of God. And you know that maybe his children, his children are not going to school. You know for sure maybe they're not having have food. Are you willing to go and plant a seed and go support such? Now, we find that they were doing this not because of expecting anything, but what did they get in return? The church grew day by day. The church was growing day by day. It was adding to numbers, many numbers, day by day. This is what you're saying. As a church, when you give us, as a church who are freely giving and have liberty in what we're doing in service to God, you expect numbers to increase. You expect the anointing of God following you. You expect harmony in the church because we have given, because we have planted some seed. It may take some time. You may say, oh, I've done all. You're a young pastor. I've done all that I should do. Two years down the line, no results. Three years down the line, no results. Four lines, four years down the line, no results. I remember there was one preacher who was preaching to us. And um, when he, he said when he was a young boy, he was a small kid. He was given a small plot of shamba to farm. And without understanding, he got some beans and put, planted them and watered them. And after watering, he sat there to see them germinate. He waited to see them germinate. One hour, no germination. Two hours, no germination. Three hours, no germination. Oh, he was fed up. He couldn't even sleep. He waited for many hours. So by the end of the day, when the seeds could not germinate, he was so offended and fed up, he came and destroyed the work. <laughs> destroyed the work. <laughs> Don't be like that, pastor. Don't destroy the work that you have done because you cannot see fruit. Wait, and the Lord will come in due time. Wait, and God will come and bless you. And you rejoice that you waited. God is not looking for quick solutions. He wants to prepare your heart. And when he blesses you, you will surely enjoy him. And you recognize that it is him who has done it. Now, I want us to look at there is the need to die for the sake of the gospel. And just introduce this. Maybe you continue with it the sec- next time. But I want us to know this, that um, there is a cost we got to pay for the sake of the gospel. Our great commission, according to Matthew 7, 28, 19, go ye. Going ye is not just, not just the word, but there is a cost. Similarly, when you get saved and you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there is a cost that you have to pay. And I want us to look at this in our next lesson. She, how, what do we need to plant? Where do we need to die to self? Where do we need to lose our lives? And God is faithful. He will help us to understand and even to bear much fruit in our spiritual life because God is a good God. Let's pray as we conclude. Father, in Jesus' name again, we thank you for this message. We humble ourselves before you and we commit our lives to you and ask you to continue leading us and empowering us. Let your perfect will be done in our lives. Let your name be glorified and exalted in all that we do. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 